<clears throat> Welcome to episode 131. And today I have a friend and a colleague called David Gill Cristobal. David is a serial entrepreneur and co-founder of The Collection by HCB. David Christabel turns people into brands by putting the correct business systems and structures in place for scalable success. David clients become the go-to experts in the industry. He has spent more than three decades in the sports and business arena, which includes a career as a professional footballer. And he's also created and sold one of Switzerland's top health and fitness organizations. Um, his multiple companies are on a mission to create 1,000 uh, heart-centered millionaires. David holds a master's degree in business management and leadership, and he's been humbled by numerous awards. He's built multiple five, six, and seven-figure businesses, spoken to more than 50,000 people at business and financial conferences, including 13 different countries on three different continents. Uh, the people he's had the privilege of sharing the stage with include titans such as Sir Richard Branson, Kevin Harrison, Sir Robert Kiyosaki. I don't think he's a sir, but Robert Kiyosaki, Tony Robbins, and many more. So David, uh, I'm so excited to welcome you to the episode today. Thank you, Kevin. Oh, that was amazing. But I'm not that so. I'm not that cool. <laughs> well, I, I beg to differ. We only have cool people on the uh, podcast here with us today, and you stand out for sure. Um, it's not often I get chance to speak with professional uh, football players or soccer players for the for the people in the, in the other side of the world. And you started your career off uh, in that profession. Tell us a little bit about that. How have you gone from uh, living your life as a uh, professional athlete to now being in the position where you uh, serve and support business owners? Yeah, I think that's a, a kind of interesting thing. Um, well, I kicked off with my my, my first uh, introduction with the with the ball was at age five, and that was something playing around in playgrounds and playing with a lot of friends. And one of those friends, the goalkeeper, actually, he's dead, was um, a coach from one of the of the city where I lived uh, at that time um, a junior coach of a soccer team so he he was uh, uh, looking at us and one day he came to me and he said oh you kind of like playing uh, soccer I mean you you you're small but you're very quick and you're very and, and, and you're very fast I mean there's something there would you like join us in in a in a training session and I was like okay why not so I went there and it was fun. It was great. Um, then we had a couple of repetitions. And from, and from there, I started just to feel like, wow, this is something I really like. I started to develop kind of a passion, which I didn't know what passion means at that age, obviously. But it was like, okay, something is burning in me. I feel that fire. I always wanted to be around the ball. I always wanted to kick the ball. And uh, I didn't want to sit in the schoolroom just wasting time because I wanted to um, just be out there and play. So from there, we just, you know, the, the things start moving and um, um, I went into the next team and the next team and the next team. And eventually at age 15, um, someone from the, um, uh, from the local uh, uh, team talked to me and said, do you want to um, do a, a summer camp uh, because uh, he was a, um, um, a scout, a soccer scout. Do you want to uh, do the summer camp with, uh, um, with the big team? And I say, well, um, yes, of course. So I went there and it was tough. I was, I was little compared to the other people. I wasn't, you know, um, strong enough, but I was quick. I was fast. They saw something and they invited me to join the farm team. So from that moment on, things happened, um, starts, you know, ascending the ladder, went to the, the, um, the, first, the first team. And uh, that's the moment when I started actually my career. And I hear, I hear the, uh, the importance of the fire and the passion. I always loved playing football as a kid, but I, I don't know if I would have described it as a, having that fire and passion uh, in the same way. How, how has that served you uh, in your career in professional uh, sports and then additionally beyond that? Well, you need to be on fire uh, if, if you have a passion. That's, that's something that uh, there is no way around. But at, at a young age, you don't know about that because you don't know the meaning of it, the deep meaning of it. I mean, you don't know the, the meaning of uh, discipline and performance and courage and and uh, 
uh, challenges and all that stuff. So I learned a lot through that uh, 16 years of my uh, career being a professional, going through great moments and going to really disasters and, and, and disappointments in any type of it. So that shapes you. Um, so it's like, a it's like a sculpture. You start with something and then you start working on it and you never end it because it's, it's, it's never finished. So you adapt over time that type of mentality. And that type of mentality actually helped me as a very little boy, not being tall and strong enough, fighting against the defenders of the team. I was forward and it was tough to me just um, um, playing against them because they, they had a big advantage. So I had to find a way around it. And all those elements helped me um, develop skill sets that put my mindset into the right fire so when i when i when i had that fire i could feel it in my body which then translated into the physics and when you have that fire into the physics you shine and that shining is what makes you so special because that's you that's something nobody on earth can duplicate or model as we used to say, or even copy, it's impossible. I mean, you can learn how to run, you can learn how to jump, but there is no human on earth that can shine the same way you shine. And that's where you get connected with people. That's, that's really the point, that, that's something, if you have that shining, you can connect on a human level and you can connect also on a business level. So that, so that that is obviously um, you you need time for it. This is not something you 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 wake up the next day you have it. This is this is dedication. This is commitment. This is going the extra mile. I had to put in a hundred and ten percent because a hundred wasn't enough. I had coaches. They pushed me so strong. I had one coach, he said to me, oh, okay, from now on, you're going to play on the right, uh, sorry, on the, on, the, on the left side. And I was like, what? Left? I'm right-footed. I'm not left-footed. I can't play on that. Well, there is no option. You do it, you don't play. And that was a very hard moment because I, was, I didn't understand why he was doing this to me. Uh, he was like, oh, you're destroying my, my, my career. So I was, I actually said, okay, I'm scared, but I'm going to do it. Because obviously he sees something I don't see. And that's what actually great coaches and mentors um, see what you don't see. Because you focus on, on, on other things. And they have passed that level already. So they can see other things. And they tell you also the bullshit. And when someone tells you that and it hurts, then you have a choice. So I made my choice. I went through a year of challenges and, and, and big disasters because I was bad. And I was like, no, this is not, this is what, why he is doing this to me. But obviously there is always two sides of the coin, right? So what happens then the next year, uh, this coach changed um, team. And I was like, oh, Finally, a relief. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be back on my usual uh, place and, 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 and feel again the way I felt. And I was so wrong again because <laughs> someone else came and actually in his game scheme, I didn't play a role. Ooh. And that was even worse. So imagine going from, hey, top to who? Who is this guy? You know? So I got a call. And I was really, I was really, I was just hitting bottom at that time. And I was like, okay. So I got a call, I picked up and it was my old coach. And I was like, hi, how you doing? And I was like, well, not so well. Oh, what, what's wrong? I told him the story. He said, oh, okay, well, you have a choice. I was like, hey, what are you talking about? You have a choice. Mm -hmm. so, well. I put you through some challenges, but with a specific purpose. Because I was building the future and you didn't even know it. 
and I didn't get it. I was like, what are you talking about? He said, well, as you know, I'm now coaching another team. Yes. And now my, um, my um, play scheme, I need you to be in there. So I, 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 I need you. And when I heard that, I said, what do you mean that you need me? He said, yes, because I don't find left, um, uh, left-footed uh, soccer player on the market like you. And I was like, oh, okay. So I started getting the message. So he actually saw something. He was building the future, but putting me into a very uh, disappointment situation because I thought he was, you know, he had something against me and, and, and all those bad things. But then actually he turned me into an asset. And that's when actually that was my first game changer in, into my first career and then obviously from that moment on I changed him I went to him I played with him for long years that catapulted me in another area because then you become more uh, valuable because then you are an asset um, soccer teams start seeing you as an asset I mean you're a player for the fans you're great but for the team you are an asset they invest in an asset okay and that's the moment where I started thinking about, oh, okay, this is interesting. So from that moment on, my mind that my mindset changed into the business world as well. So that was kind of another step ahead. I didn't even imagine that could be possible as a soccer player, but that's uh, that was really really cool. Then I moved on to other teams and other teams, and uh, <laughs> and then happened what nobody wants to hear. One day. I got called into the manager's room and uh, I, I get in and, and, and I, I saw the, those faces and I was like, oh, what, what's going on? So I didn't really spend much time on it. It said, um, we don't need you anymore. Hmm. So what do you mean? So we don't need you anymore. You're too old. What, what do you mean you're too old? <laughs> you, 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 you're too old, you're too old, um, you, you're, not, you're not strong enough, you're not fast enough, you know. So what, what the hell is going on here? I'm, I'm, I'm old, I'm 33, I'm still, I'm still on fire, I'm still, I'm still burning, this is my passion, this is what I wanna do for, for a living. So yeah, but we don't need you anymore. At age 33, I got kicked off. And from one day to another, I went from being on the top of the ladder to disappearing from the stage. And this is hard mm -hmm. because if you are used to that type of life, because everything is scheduled, everything is, is done for you. You don't even have to think, you just have to show up and perform. That, that, was, that was my daily routine, show up, perform, deliver, be disciplined, commit to the, um, uh, to, to what you have to do and that's it. The next day you see yourself out. So what happens? You, you, you go crazy, okay? So well, the story ends there because uh, it was really the final of my career. And uh, I, was, I, was, I was very sad. Uh, I was disappointed. Uh, I didn't understand why they are doing this to me. I, I put 16 years of my life into, into that uh, sport with all the passion. And now from one day to other, someone tells you, we, we don't need you anymore. Okay, so what do you do? What do you do? I had no one helping me transitioning from being a professional soccer player to, to what? <laughs> that was the question. And uh, that, that was one of the moments I, I understood the, 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 the questions you ask yourself define the success. I didn't get that. So I went traveling because at the, you know, as a professional, you don't have much time traveling. So you give up your life 
uh, for 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 something, whatever that is, uh, money, passion, what whatever. But time, you don't have time. So now you have a lot of time. You don't know what to do. Your friends working. Everybody's away. You alone. So I, I I told to myself, okay, go. Let's let's you know let's let's travel the world. Travel the world. Um, I circled twice the globe. I end up somewhere into the nicest uh, places and beaches. And one day I was there just looking into the sun uh, set and, and, and telling to myself, man, this is boring. Uh, what I'm gonna do the next, the next 50 years, I wanna live for, for minimum 50 years. What, 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 sh what shall I do? I mean, I learned so much. Who, who shall I give this? Uh, gifts who shall I pass these gifts to it's a, it's a waste just sitting around and, and doing nothing and, and and some people may go now oh you're crazy I, I wished I, I I could go for six seven months for vacation traveling the world being on the nice places I get that yes it is fun it is nice and and not many can do that but it turns out boring yeah. and it's a waste of time. It's a waste of skill sets. It's, it's a waste of opportunity. So I asked myself, so what, what, what's the, what's the, what's, what can you do? What, what can you pass on? What, how can you create something? How can you help people? All those questions came up to my mind. And uh, I always turned back to the same point. Well, sports, health, fitness, okay. So I said to myself, well, how hard can it be uh, get into that and start a business that is related to health, fitness and sports? And that's what I did. I thought, yeah, I know how to. And I was so wrong. I, I didn't have a clue how to actually create a business and run a business. Um, so I went back. I was super on fire. I was yes, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna you know I'm gonna become an entrepreneur now because I know how how this runs. And I rent a place, fifty square meters. You know, I I bought equipment and I told everybody I knew, friends, family, uh, and neighbors. I'm I'm gonna become an entrepreneur now. I'm gonna open a fitness and gym. And um, please come and be my and be my 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 customer. So it, uh, it went well at the beginning, but um, at the end it turned out that they didn't become customers because it was friends, family, and they thought, well, why should I pay for it? <laughs> and that hit me hard. I said, well, what, well, because you're using the stuff, you know, I mean, I have, I have costs. And then I realized, oh, this is not a business, this is a hobby. And with a hobby, you can't survive. And many people live in a hobby. They think they have a business, but they actually have a hobby and it's an expensive hobby. At the end of the month, you have bills to pay. And it turned out all, the, all my friends uh, uh, went away because when I start asking for money, they said, why should I pay? I'm your friend. You know? <laughs> so I start... I, <laughs> I was there again and, and, and thinking to myself, asking the questions, um, what's going wrong? And I realized that I had absolutely no clue how to run a business. I was no entrepreneur. I was no businessman. I had, I had, I, I, I missed those skills. And then I realized that, okay, it's the same game when I started with soccer. I have to learn that. I have to put work in it. It's going to take time. I have to develop the, the entrepreneur mindset, the way I developed the, the soccer player mindset. I have to have the right team around me, which means you need coaches, you need managers, you need people that have gone the route down many, many times because that's how it, that's how it works. And it doesn't matter where, which business you are in, it works out always the same time. So I, I took a, a piece of paper and I started uh, writing down what 
skill sets I wanted to develop over the next two years. And I set the date because you have to set the date. You have to put that into paper. You have to write it down because if you write it down, then it's actually a commitment. It's a goal. And I put the date when I wanted to um, finalize that, meaning it's done. You're going to step up. It's going to hurt, but then it's done. So I asked myself, who in this globe can help me and can help develop the business I want. So first of all, I had to ask myself, what is the business I want? Because that's a question that is very important. If you don't define the business you are in, you have no business. And that's, that's it's difficult to get it really nailed. Because at the beginning, you don't know how to ask those questions. So I went out, I created an avatar because I wanted to talk to specific people. And by specific, I mean, I wanted to talk to the 10 top. Because if you want to play Champions League, you need to talk to the Champions League guys. You need to talk to the guys who have won the Champions League multiple times. If you know what Champions League is, it's, a, it's, it's the, the highest tournament in Europe. I mean, if you get that, then you, you, you know, it's like going up the Mount Everest. It's, it's the top. So I wrote down, I want to talk to the 10 Champions League entrepreneurs that have been on the market for about or minimum two decades, have built multiple eight-figure business, have failed minimum three times, because that's where you're going to learn the most out of it, the failures, because you are not going to repeat those mistakes, because that's what uh, avoids working with mentors, the, the good mentors. They are going to tell you, don't do this, because then it's going to be hard, you know? So I made the avatar, I went out there, and it took time, but I, I, um, I was disciplined. I, I spoke to those people. I found a team. I created a team around me, and I started working with them. And then I realized, well, man, this is completely another world. But I wanted to be in that. It was really, I, I, was, I was feeling the fire getting back to me. I was developing that, that passion again. I said, hey, you have a gift, something there you can pass on. And, and even if you can help 10 people, it's worth, it's, it's, your, it's your mission for the next 50 years. So I start working on the plan and um, the gym starts turning around. Um, we did better and better and better and better. And then at a certain point, I asked myself, oh, okay, so how can I scale this business? So I, I, I had a conversation with one of my mentors and I asked him the question and he told me, what are you selling? And I just said, well, what? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? What I'm selling? So yes, what are you selling? I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm fitness. And, and, and he told me, are you sure? Are you sure you're selling fitness? I said, yes. And then he told me, well, then I'm very sorry to tell you, but if you're selling fitness, you can't scale it. And I was like, well, what do you mean? He said, well, the people you need to talk to to scale a business, they, they're not buying fitness. If you think you can go to people and ask for money, so you're going to use other people's money to build and grow your business so you can scale it to a chain and you're going to sell fitness, you're going to walk away with zero because nobody's buying fitness. Although everyone should do something for their fitness because that's something that everyone should do. I encourage everyone to do anything. It doesn't need to be in the gym, go out, walk um, in, in the woods and, and, and do something. Just keep your body just keep your body moving. 
And I was like, what, what he means by that? I'm selling fitness, I can't scale it. I didn't understand. And then I, I said, okay, well, then uh, what shall I do? And he told me, write a book. And I was again like, what, write a book? So wait a second, I'm selling fitness, it's not good. Now write a book, it's gonna be the game changer. And what do you mean by that? He said, well, if you want to talk to people that will eventually invest in your, uh, in your business to grow it, to scale it, to make it a chain, a leading chain where you live, they're going to need something, a vehicle that they know they put $1 in, they're going to get $2 out. So I was even more confused now. <laughs> I was, I was even, it's like, okay, well, stop a minute. I just need a break because I, it's my, my brain is going like really hot now. Okay. Um, so I had to step back just to digest everything because I didn't get it. So I, uh, a few days back, uh, I called him back and then I said, okay, let's, let's talk about this. What do you mean by that? And he said, well, it's very simple. You're going to write a book and it's not about writing a book because it's cool and you're going to get uh, authority and credibility and awareness and for the ego and everything. And it's not about that. I mean, this is a side effect, which, which comes with it and, 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 and a lot more. It's about putting down into, let's say 200 pages, the vehicle they need to invest in to capitalize money to make a profit on the money so actually i thought i had to write a book about fitness how to you know become this and that how to lose weight how to gain muscle and how to become uh, stronger it wasn't about that because that wouldn't get me money so it was about getting all my system into the book to show them and explaining them in detail what they are investing in because if they understand that it's like an atm you know put you, you put a dollar in and, and and you press on the on, on the button and you get two dollars out that's where smart entrepreneurs, investors, funds, banks, people with money are looking around all day long because nowadays it's really hard to get some something on your money. You put your money at the bank, no way. So they, every, everyone is looking at that. So if they understand by you explaining in the book, you are not buying fitness you are actually investing in an income producing asset. It doesn't matter how it looks like, it doesn't matter how big it is, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's a system, a proven system, and we had the data. I was in for years and, and I know exactly how the business works, the peaks, the lows and everything. So we, we could put out data all day long. If they understand the system, then they listen to you. So it's not done yet, but they're gonna listen to you. They're gonna open the doors, they're gonna invite you. And that's what you want. You want to pass the door. You want to pass the bouncer at the club or the secretary at the, at the, at the company, you know, talking to those people. It's very hard to get to those people. So <clears throat> I said, I don't know how to do it. I, I don't know how to write. I'm not a good writer. All those things that's, that come up, all those objections. And he said, well, if, if, if you have to go through it. It's the same story with the soccer. The same story with the soccer. So I went to it. It took me about two years. Um, I did it. Nowadays, I would do it completely different because it was, it's, it was a waste of time. But I understand now what's the concept behind it. Uh, creating an asset. 
So smart entrepreneurs should focus on income producing uh, tasks and not sitting down two years writing on a book. This is something you as a leader have to delegate. That's, uh, that's my learnings from, from that experience. So I got the book and I start um, connecting with uh, people that were in the investment uh, industry and phone calls and, and people starting um, inviting me. And then something happened there as well. Uh, and that was another aha moment in my life. They listened to me. They listened to a nobody. I mean, some of them realized, oh, you are the guy who played soccer at this and this team. Yes, but that long time ago, it's different. But the rest didn't know who I, who I was. So that's interesting. People, very, very important and wealthy people, all of a sudden invites you to have a conversation about an opportunity. And the opportunity is not you're going, you, you're going to go there and sell something because that's the wrong mindset. It's you go there to have a, to have a, a, a conversation about an opportunity. And that's it. That's all. So what the book does for you, because I, I send him the book with a letter explaining him uh, why I connected with him and so on and so forth. So I send him the book and then I had a reason to call him just for ask for feedback about the book, just that. It wasn't about a sales conversation. It wasn't about me asking for money. It was just about, oh, you get the book, great. Have you had a chance to read on it? Maybe yes, maybe no. Oh, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to check in. It's just feedback. But then I started a connection. So I, I, I made the first step. I started a connection. I, I set the hook in his head. He had the book on his desk or on bookshelf. He, wa he walked away every day, he passed through. And, every, and, and, and you know how it works. Like when you set an anchor, it works, okay? So one day he got me a call, I got there and we had a really great um, uh, conversation. And it was all about the fire, the burning, the opportunities. It was not about how much sales, um, What's the return, all this? It was setting the point, getting on temperature, you know? From that moment on, then what happens? You start creating a relationship. You need that, especially nowadays. You, you're not trusting people a lot, you know? Like uh, people you don't know, you're not trusting you. You're not gonna hand over $3 million just like that. It's, just, it's not gonna work. So you build a relationship, which is also a key point in, in business. You need to put a lot in relationship. People is buying from people. And that's something not from now. That's something it's 3,000 years old. It doesn't matter what. It's always a transaction between two human, two human beings. And, and if there is trust, then you have a transaction. If there is no trust, there is no transaction. It's so simple. So um, to make it short, um, it was about a six, seven months conversation. Um, we ended up putting down some agreements. Uh, he, he wanted to invest in the idea of uh, scaling the business, opening different or more facilities around the country. And, and we created a really great plan around it and started working on it. And, um, but it took about two years of relationship making efforts to get to the point he hit the button and then the transaction was made. So sometimes we are too greedy and we want the quick, fast transaction. You don't see the long-term benefit here and we are not in for the, for, for the short-term benefit here. That's, uh, that's not, that's not the, the, the human being I want to work with because that's not the, the values I represent and the energy I want to have in my life. I want to work with people that are heart-centered, that understand, respect, discipline, and talking on the, on, you know, on the same level. 
It doesn't matter if there is age difference. It doesn't really matter. So you feel that. And you develop over time that kind of feeling. At the beginning, maybe you, you have some uh, miss, you know, some, sometimes it doesn't work, but at the end, you start developing that skill. It takes time. How you understand the people, human behavior, and, and all those things. So that was another turning moment because then we went from one 50 square meter facility. So we so the, the question was, how do we turn a 50 square meter um, workout facility in one of the leading and largest chains of health and fitness in Switzerland? That was the first step of the plan. And then how do we exit that for an eight-figure check. That was the second point on the plan. So you have a map, you have a road map. And that helped everyone in the team to uh, transition from where we came from to the moment we exited. And all this started with a single 200 page book incredible hey david that's a, that's a very uh big journey that you've taken us on there and i want to recap a few of the key points that you just shared because there's so much gold and wisdom and knowledge and experience in what you've just shared so i think the first message i, I want the listeners to really take from this is that no one can shine the way that you shine right no one can shine the way that you shine when you get on purpose when you're connected with your passion and you're focused on that, then you're going to show up in a way that no one else can actually replicate. And uh, some of the, the key values I heard David talking about was really being instrumental to his soccer success and then the business success, which we're, we're on the verge of hearing about where, where this went, uh, you know, was actually having courage, having discipline, focusing on performance, uh, making sure you adapt, be dedicated and be committed. Now, part of David's approach with having those values uh, really is that you know he he identified that he turned himself into an asset his coach helped turn him into an asset on the soccer field and actually uh it sounds like a coach later helped him turn his ip his knowledge all this amazing stuff that's in his head into an asset that's on page uh, on the page you know that other people can can connect with and even when when you were stuck david uh facing some challenges the business wasn't quite going where you wanted it to be you identified there were several things that were really important one how do I identify the skills that I need to make this happen? So if you're listening and things aren't firing the way you want, what skills are you missing right now? And number two, how do I develop the mindset? What's, what's the mindset of the people who have been playing in the Champions League of sport or business or whatever you're doing? What is their mindset? How do we tap into that and leverage that? Uh, number three, how do I get the right team around me? Who are the right team players? Who are the people who have play the game at the level that, you know, that I want to be playing at? And how can I learn not only from their successes, but from their failures? What are the mistakes that they've made that, hey, I can, they can just tell me about it so I don't have to make the same mistakes? Now, I know there's way more uh, than that in, in what you just shared, but I'm excited to get to, to what happened. Once you connected, once you created this book and this asset, it gave you a vehicle to go and connect with, uh, you know, have people, important people, wealthy people want to know you and connect with you. And you got to this stage where you asked two really important questions, then, which is number one, how do we turn this 50 square meter facility into the leading chain in the whole country of Switzerland? And number two, once we've done that, how do we exit for eight figures uh, or more? Uh, eight, eight figures. Now, that's a decent amount. You're talking 10 million euros plus uh, in there. That's, that's an amazing question. Not many people will ever ask that question. How do I create this thing that I'm working on into an asset that's going to deliver me 10 million or more? Uh, and David, I, I want to jump in there just to recap everything. And now I'm intrigued to hear what happened once you set those questions, you got the book, you got the person on your team. Where did it lead? What, what came out? Yes, well, that was the next challenge because now you have the, the asset and, and you have the right questions you ask yourself. But now there is another level that you need to develop because there is always a next level, you know? So you, you have to look again to those people that reached that level because they are going to ask you other questions and those questions are going to be even more challenging so now you have the asset now you have a clear roadmap and now what you have to do 
is just focusing on getting the people on board. And how do you get the people on board? And this is, this is again, it, it goes back. If you are talking to anyone, anywhere, and you are so in fire, and you don't care what they're going to think, what they're going to say, if they're going to tell you, oh, you're nuts, it's not going to work, it's not a good idea, you're going to lose a lot of money, and all those things that you're going to hear, and you hear them if you talk to the wrong people, because they are not in the mindset they need to be. They haven't reached that level. So if you don't allow to uh, the, the, the pressure that you're going to feel coming from, from, from the surrounding, if you, if, you, if you don't stop there because you have a clear, um, a clear goal, then you're going to find the right people to talk to. And you're going to need to talk to a lot of people because that's really the thing. It's not, a, it's not a conversation with five people. It's a con 500 people, 1,000 people. You need to get up every day and set yourself a goal. Today, I'm going to talk to 10 people. The next day, I'm going to talk to 10 people. And the next day, I'm going to talk to 10 people. So you're going to talk to 50 people on a week. And from those 50 people, you're going to have another conversation and another conversation. So you need a mass to move on. It's like a filter. So you need to filter the people that see your burning, your shining, because then you're going to connect. They have a shining as well, because they made some fortune as well. So they have it as well. And if they see what they feel, then you have a connection. So you need to go out there and you need to shine and you just need to talk. So what happens here? I need a bigger stage. And this is what I mean by next level. So when you have an asset and it is interesting, it is a trend, it is something that is unique, it is something that will really impact in some way the world or human being, then there is um, places out there, you're gonna be invited to share the message, okay? So what happened? I wrote to the media, to radio stations, to TV stations. I talked to journalists, um, to publishers, to magazines. I tapped into the vehicle of distribution, the message out into the world. It's not just internet and you know, social media and that. It works as well, but you, know, you, need, you, need, you need that stage because that stage is nowadays still um, it looks more professional. So you will get invitations to talk into radios. You will get invitations to be on TV, on magazines. You will talk to journalists. And those people will turn your story, your message, your impact into kind of a magnet that will attract the right people because they will turn your story and they will tell your story in their words. So it's not coming from you, it's somebody else with a credibility, with a status, with a sim symbolic uh, status is telling about you. So if those distribution channels are talking about you, and the listener's head goes like, oh, this must be something interesting. So that's kind of the next stage you need. Because you need to go out there and then focus on spread the message. You, once you've done the work of getting the people you needed to and the, the investment you needed to, now you have that. So it's not finished there because it's always the next step. It's always doing the right step in the right order. And that's why you need a roadmap. And, and, and I know it's, it's hard if you, if you want to focus something on 10 years, but the more often you do it, the easier it gets. 
And obviously it's not gonna stay like that. It's something that will change over time and you have to adapt over time and maybe tweak here and there because that's life. But you have, you have, a, you have a, a clear target, you are walking through it. So sometimes the vehicle you're gonna get there is changing, but you're gonna get there. And at least if you don't have any vehicle uh, left off, you still have your legs. And if you can walk, you walk there. So there is no distance on earth you can't walk. If your burning is so high, there is no mountain that is gonna stop you. It's kind of a metaphoric thing and you know, but it's, it's just that mentality you need to adapt. It's the same so, as... No distance you can't walk. David, I, I really love that. There's no distance you can't walk anywhere on earth. Uh, hey. Uh, it, there's, there's such power in that in itself as a metaphor and you say to climb the mountain david what i'd love to hear from you is what what happened in the end you've done a very good job of creating the book and the asset and you've got it out to the world and you've gone and spoke to uh, the media to press whoever was listening you spoke to 10 people per day so you're getting the message out there what what actually happened in the end to the business did you get to the stage where you were able to uh, to realize your initial vision it, it kind of yes. I mean, I was still on the I was still on on the route. I wasn't. It wasn't finished because once you get there, you you actually you never finish. I I never want to finish. You know, my last day on this earth, I I just want to keep doing the things I love doing. There is no point me saying I'm 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 retiring. For me, that's that's my that's my mindset. That's my mentality. Maybe it's not for everyone. No, but. That's good. I want to just be here for the last moment and, and doing, you know, the, my last breath is just doing what I love doing. And, and this, is, this is what keeps me just going and going and going because there is, there is an end. And we don't realize when you're 20 and 30. But if we, if we get closer to that, then it's that, oh, I should do this and should do this and should do this. So just go out there and try, just try, just, Stand up, walk, fall down, stand up, walk, fall down. This is something we do when we are child and learn and we're not, we're not complaining. We're just repeating, repeating, repeating. So if you keep repeating what you do, you become a master. It's a simple math. So what happens? I got to the point I wanted, I, I got what I wanted. And now I was like asking, so, okay, what next? And it actually was fun. I didn't even have to think about what next because then People come up to me and ask me, how did you do that? How did you do that? And I say, well, I just wrote a book. But what do you mean I just wrote a book? Well, I just created an asset. I just created an asset that for the reader, and that's the purpose you need to think about when you create an asset, what's in it for them? It's not about you. Nobody cares about you. I mean, there is some purpose in, 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 in there just because <laughs> the satisfaction of I did it, but it, it's, it's not that. It's always the focus is always what's in it for them. So you have to engineer an asset that is a benefit for the reader, for them. And that was another turning moment when then people started asking, so I want to do this. I want to do this. Can you help me? Can you help me? And I wasn't even thinking about that. But then as things happen, it's, it, it, it becomes opportunity, helping other people creating their assets so that they could um, realize their dreams, whatever that is. And when I understood the concept of if you have the capacity and the skill set, the knowledge, the passion, and understand how to create an asset that will bring you a benefit, it doesn't matter what, then you have learned the skill set of actually not depending from anyone. And that is, that is, I think, uh, that is, I think, strong. If you are capable of becoming un independent, by mean independent is, you do your passion and you can live from it. 
and you have the time to do it whenever you want, what you want, how often you want, then you, you get to the point where you start, you know, getting into that Champions League, um, Champions League level. And that was one of the biggest learnings I had over the last two decades. Focus on creating assets that will free you out from being dependent from anything. I love that. Focus on creating assets that are going to free you up so you can live uh, your Champions League life. You can go and do what you want, where you want, with who you want, because you've created a business or a system that's working without you, or you have this uh, amazing book or asset that's going out there to, uh, to spread your message and connect people with you. David, there's, there's so much value and so much wisdom in all of this. Now, one of the key questions on this podcast is around your life-changing question. What's one question that you've asked that's had the biggest positive impact on your life? Now, we may have heard that already because you shared uh, two or three really valuable questions already, but I just want to check in. Is there a question that you wanted to share with us today? There is a couple of them. I mean, I, I have, I have, I have had many of them throughout my last uh, almost fifty years, and one question I'm asking myself right now: How can I develop the next mindset, having reached so different levels? What's the next level gonna be? So what is the next level I need to develop on, on my passion side that I'm growing myself into a next sphere that the impact is even going to be bigger. It's the next scale. So that's, and that's the beauty of it. There is never an end. Sometimes you think, oh, you reach the goal, it's done, and now what? It becomes boring. So when you reach that, Go out, celebrate. You know, you, you, you did, you've done something. You, you, this is great. Go out and celebrate, which many people even don't do because they think, oh, okay, what's next? What's next? No, no, stop it. Relax. Celebrate. Now, what's next? Start questioning yourself. What's the next level on your life you want to you, you wanna reach? And then you... Always... Sorry, David, you're still going. And then you just uh, need to... Um, reach out to those individuals that are obviously in the next level, which would be the world champion, the world champion level. Okay. Because that's, that's the top. I love that. What is the next level for you? So wherever you're at in your business or your life, hey, maybe even your health, whatever is that thing that you want to accomplish or achieve or grow, what is the next level for you? And if you can get a vision of it or get uh, an idea of it in your mind, then there are other people out there who have probably already trodden that path or achieved what you want to achieve. So uh, go and find out who, who are those people. So what is that next level? And who are the people who can uh, can help guide the way, save you from the uh, the challenges or the failures that they've made and give you a, a quick steer on the path? Now, David, you, you provided so much value in this episode, and I know for sure uh, there'll be people who are listening who would love to reach out to you. Maybe they have some questions around growing their business or creating an asset. You know, it sounds like you have a very good uh, skill set in helping people create their own asset and get their message out into the world. So if anyone's listening uh, and they want to reach out to you, uh, where would they best contact you? Well, thank you, Kevin, for that opportunity. No, it's very simple. Just just uh, write me an email uh, on my email. It's uh, david at davidgilcristobal.com. david at davidgilcristobal.com or just pick up the phone and, and, and talk to me. I'm a human being, you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna just uh, not respond uh, because I know how hard it is just picking up the phone and talking to someone. So just pick up the phone, um, talk to me, share your ideas, and we take it from there. I'm, I'm, hey. sure, you're gonna, I'm sure you're gonna, I'm sure you're gonna share uh, the details. Uh, I certainly will wherever you're listening to this check in the show notes or the page notes and uh, David's email address will be there uh, and in terms of his phone number I, I think you can email him first and then, and then he'll, <laughs> he'll give you that no problems whatsoever so David I, I can't thank you enough for your time and energy you've 
clearly had uh, you know extraordinary success in not just one career but uh, two careers and now even in, in a third uh, career and I can see how they're linked together at the outset I wasn't quite sure how uh, how you'd arrived at where you are right now coming from being a professional soccer player but hey, what I can hear amongst the core of this is really these common values and beliefs this is probably one of the most important things that's, that's been drawn out for me so if you are focused on your passion and you know, shining, then no one can shine the way you shine. That's such an important message that I've heard in the, in the call today. And if you keep walking, you know, there's no place on earth that you can't get to. Keep taking one step at a time. And that's going to need for you to bring some courage, some discipline. You're going to need to be uh, dedicated, committed. And most of all, you're going to need to be ready to put in the effort to get that performance and be ready to adapt. So, David, I can't thank you enough for your time and energy today. And uh, thank you so much. I thank you. You coming for this great opportunity and um, yeah it's just just wonderful